13. At 24, she's already performed at the top level as a classical crossover singer. Elizabeth Marvelly, now Lizzie Marvelly, walking away from the genre, choosing to recreate herself as a pop star. <laughs> she's got a new single, Generation Young, and you can hear by the giggle she is with us <laughs> in the studio. Good morning. <laughs> What's funny about recreating yourself as a pop star? <laughs> You know, I think it's not so much funny, but I'm really enjoying it. You know, it's um, it's been amazing for me to actually get to sing and write the music that I, you know, that's in my heart. So it always makes me kind of happy talking about it. Let's go backwards before we go forwards. Mm-hmm. How did you end up in classical cross- crossover to begin with? Well, you know, funnily enough, I, I almost fell into it, really. Um, I was always singing when I was a kid, and then... I at about I'm just trying to think about 15 16 uh, I, I did a show with uh, Frankie Stevens and then I went on tour with Sir Howard Morrison um, and Dame Alvina Major and at the end of that uh, the next year I was signed by a classical label in London so I, I really kind of fell into it um, and at that time I was listening to a lot of that music and then as I grew I just started listening to different things and became influenced by different people I suppose Fair to say you sort of fell out of love with popera? Um, I think I'll always have a love for classical music um, because I think it's so much, it was so much a part of me. But I think, yeah, I certainly had a moment, you could probably call it maybe a crossroads, where I came off a tour and I'd had an amazing time um, and I love being a musician, love being on stage, but I just wasn't loving the music anymore, the classical music. And I just, you know, I had that moment where I thought, well... I've got to be happy doing what I'm doing and, and I really want to write and I, when I started writing I started writing pops and that's just kind of how it happened. Was it a sudden moment or was it just sort of a gradual thing or were you standing on stage and you thought no this is just not me anymore or was it just something that had happened over time? Well I think I'd been coming to that point for a while. Um, I'd had a conversation with the head of my record label then uh, Matt Headland, who was a great, amazing mentor to me, really, and he just said at the end of this meeting, "Look, Lizzie, if you aren't loving this, then you've, you, if you go further down this road, it's just going to get worse. So you're really going to have to, you need to go away and figure out what it is that you want." Um, and I was quite taken aback by that, but he was really right, and he kind of started me off down that path of thinking about who I am as a musician and what I really wanted to say um, and the music that I wanted to be, you know, devoting my life to. Um, And then that was probably six months before that tour and then on that tour it was like it just reinforced it for me. Did you have to think very hard about what you want to be? I had to really kind of delve into myself. I know that sounds really sort of strange, but I think because I was so young when I fell into um, classical, I hadn't really thought about, you know, who I was as a musician. That sounds ridiculous, but it's true. Um, and then when I got older, I started listening to a whole lot of different different artists and and I just realised that all of the writing that I'd been doing uh, when I was a child and when I was at high school, I was always writing music, but I'd never really... Uh, had the confidence to, you know, to put out something um, and stand behind it. And there were a couple of songs I, I wrote on my first two classical records, but I'd never really had that focus um, and the time and the encouragement to, to stand up as a writer. So, yeah, I think I had to think hard in the sense that I had to really convince myself to be brave and take the leap. Well, yeah, how frightening is it? I mean, you're not singing somebody else's songs now. No, you're singing your own, exposed. so there's a lot of you right out there. There is, yeah. It is it is quite... I found it really terrifying at the beginning. Um, and, you know, I had many moments with my manager going, oh, I just don't know how I'm going to be so exposed. <laughs> um, and she was just kind of like, oh, come on, get over it. Everyone does it. Um, and, yeah, eventually, as I kept writing, I think... I started to realise that um, it's the best thing because as an artist, uh, I'm automatically invested in the songs that I'm singing. I'm automatically connected. You know, I think there are a number of amazing interpreters of songs. You know, people like um, historically Barbara Streisand and Celine Dion and, and you know, even um, I think Mariah writes most of her, of her own music, but people like that who have interpreted other people's songs, and it is a real art and a skill, but, you know, with when you write your own music, I think you're just automatically um, better connected to it, and I think that that really kind of comes across more to an audience. Kimbra, 
Lord, mm -hmm. there's been some extraordinary young female success in this country. Obviously, you're hoping to emulate that <laughs> in your own way, not copying it. Well, no, I mean, I think it's amazing what they've done. I think starting with Kimbra, you know, I've loved her, her record. Um, there's a song on it called Settle Down that I listen to on repeat for months. Um, and then with Lord, you know, I just think it's so incredible what young female artists in New Zealand are managing to do internationally. And I mean... <laughs> It would be amazing. I think we, I think every artist has got the dream of, you know, performing in amazing places and being at the Grammys. The Grammys. Totally, <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, but at the moment, I just, I'm just loving what I'm doing, really, and taking the time to really enjoy it. Does it concern, I mean, pop opera, your, your mm -hmm. previous genre, if you like, and your first career, which yeah. you'd already moved on from, from by 24, uh, Sole Mio. Mm -hmm. the, the trio we know sell sold more DVDs, mm -hmm. more, more albums than Lord in this country. So you might have walked away from a potentially more lucrative genre. Do you, do you think? Possibly. Um, it's a really. I mean, I must admit, it's it's a really interesting genre. For a number of years, uh, classical crossover or pop opera was actually the only genre that was uh, the sales figures were increasing in, and that probably happened until about. 2007 and then they started to drop off with the rest of the industry um, but here I think Solimeo is are an incredible bunch of boys um, actually one of them sang backing vocals on my last album which I found find amazing oh that's cool <laughs> it's really cool mm. and I'm so proud um, you know to, I think the other two boys were taught by the same teacher um, that I had here uh, who and she's amazing and um, I think that a lot of w their success, though, is that they're three wonderful boys, so massively talented, but they're also so charismatic, and they're in a really, um, you, you know, you, when you watch them, you just get the feeling that they're really enjoying what they're doing. And that's a good point, because you're up there on your own. Yeah. And it's different, isn't it's, it? Very it different. It is different, definitely. Um, and it can be quite sort of lonely in a way, and I think that's... Um, I've been really lucky over the last couple of years to have a, a great manager and a great kind of team around me and I think it makes a, a real difference. But yeah, when you're on stage, it's just you. It's you. <laughs> yeah. Now, also speaking of just you, you've released this album independently. What does mm -hmm. that actually mean? I mean, you're not burning discs or doing whatever you have to do <laughs> on your own, are you? But what does it actually mean? Um, basically, it means that I've set up my own label um, and... Uh, yeah, I'm releasing the the EP and the singles under that label. Um, we have distribution partners, and you know, it's it's basically just a setup um, for the for my project now for, for the work that I do, and it's actually been really cool. You know, it's it's very kind of early stages for me, and I've you know I've I've always been interested in the business side of the music industry. Um, but I hope one day that I might be able to be involved in other artists' careers as well because I think it's just, it's such an incredible industry and I, I just, I love it. It's fascinating and there are so many talented people out there. How well does this album do have to do to keep you here or does it not really matter too much? Well, I mean, we've, I've had this conversation with my manager a couple of times and really, to be honest, we've kind of taken the approach that the only expectations we really need to uh, meet are our own at this point. Um, and especially because as an artist, you know, for me, it's really about development now. And I know that sounds kind of silly because I've been in the industry for so many years, but uh, this is a, a very new area for me and I'm kind of still sinking in and I'm really loving um, pop music and breaking down the boundaries. Um, so we're taking it quite slowly. Um, we really hope that we can build something um, from from a really organic and authentic place, and that's why I took a couple of years to write. There must be a bit of luck in this because you can work really hard, you can have all the talent in the world, and you can be you know unrecognised for your whole career, or something can happen and boom, you're number one. <laughs> I think it's a combination of all of that, to be honest. You know, I think um, it definitely it's it's definitely hard work, and I think for for me, when I was a young artist, I probably didn't really realise how much hard work it was. And then, but once you get involved, you just love it so much that it doesn't really feel like work. Um, but yeah, I think there's definitely an element of kind of right place, right time that's that's unquantifiable, really. Now you've got to run away round your neck. Is that a sort of a life statement or anything <laughs> like that? Well, yeah, in a way, I suppose I've been been running around and <laughs> running away from certain things. But I think really it's. Um, it's not that I've run away per se from classical, it's more that I've just 
really enjoyed this journey and kind of gone out to You're see what else is out there. You're only a small way into the journey at 24. <laughs> An absolute pleasure talking to you, Lizzie. Thanks Thank so much you. for coming into the studio. And there you have it, Lizzie. Marvelly. It's her new song that Glenn playing. Correct. It is 8.23. Yeah.